guys of Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Chad on Score North and scorenorth.com. These are the things that Joey Gallo can do. He can go up there, get hot, hit the ball, drive the ball, whatever you want to call it, like very few people in the world. There's, there's not too many people that do what he does. Uh, and, and many have mentioned, you know, when he starts to feel it, when he starts to settle in, when he starts to get comfortable, it's uh, it's a scary thing sometimes. And him going out there against the left-hander and doing it too, in a, in a point in the game where we really could use, uh, you know, use something, use some runs, make something happen. Um, he went out there and, uh, and hammered that one and, you know, rode that one into the next one. So that was great. Man, Rocco stole my first statement. Verbatim, I think. Joey Gallo? Uh, well, Joey Gallo is specifically, the, what did he say? Can you, can you play the first part of that clip again? I'm going to steal his statement. Yeah. <laughs> These are the things that Joey Gallo can do. He can. Here you go. Uh-huh. There's the first statement. These are the things Joey Gallo can do. Remember when old Dex was I poking at I, old Macadac last year? I knew year this too? was coming I up. I don't need Joey. He's it. washed up. He's garbage. Look at him. How can you say that? Joey Gallo fan club. Oh, Joey Gallo. A couple of, couple of bombs. Uh, tied for the major league lead with two home runs through the first three games of the season. Uh, Joey Gallo, gentlemen. By the way, welcome to Mackie and Judd here. Daily Minnesota Sports Entertainment Therapy Speculation. Celebrating a 3-0 and start to the twin season here. Joey Gallo outside of New York. Uh, there's some Carl Pavano here. Some guys just can't oh, yeah. hack it in New York, man. And that's, that's actually 1,000% true. It's a pressure cooker in New York. Ed play- yep. Who? They're the first guy to have have this publicly diagnosed. What was a guy who was a good pitcher for the Padres? <laughs> Ed Whitson was went to the Yankees and was so bad that like they egged his house or something. Ed Whitson. Oh, Ed this, Whitson. look at this guy's good pitcher, mustache, man. But fell apart. Fell apart. And he was the first guy I recall diagnosed with exactly what you're talking about, which is true. Okay. Yeah. So Ed. 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 Whitson, you, you can't have pitching without Whitson. Without Cool Whip, oh man, you're right. So he pitched mostly. Uh, it just kind of National League Pirates, Giants, yep. Padres, and then when he was 30, he went to the Yankees. His first year, his ERA was almost five in an era of the 80s where you know most pitchers were below four. And then the next year with the Yankees, man, old Ed Whitson. Had a 7.54 earned run average. Pavano what stuff, a pull yeah. by Judd. He was the so first guy. It happens to guys. Joey Gallo, 140 games in New York, 159 batting average, and uh, a 368 slugging percentage. Joey Gallo in Texas, uh, one of the best power hitters in baseball, and Joey Gallo through the first three games in Minnesota, one of the best power hitters in baseball. So maybe he just needed to be removed from the pressure cooker that was New York. And to play off that point, too, though, here's what I like. Okay, so he strikes out a, a ton, which which makes him a comp and will be, I think, all season long to Miguel Sano. Here's what I like, though. They put him at first base. He's just good there. He's naturally he's good, good there. Yeah, he's, he's a, he, he yeah. is not a – he is not – he's a guy who's going to give you added value. Like, he will strike out probably too much, right? But it's not, if he doesn't homer, he's useless. He knows how to play first. He is a gold glove outfielder. So, like, he gives you intangibles that Miguel didn't come close to. So, this might be a really good move. Yeah. Great. Could be a great signing. Could be. Could be. Just like just like when the Padres got Ed Whitson back in the yeah. mid-80s. Hate mail. I just looked it up. He was getting hate mail. Yankees fans. <laughs> Death threats. Hated Okay, him. how did people know, like, what Ed Whitson's address was back in 1986 that one was i don't publicly listed that one i don't know but i'm guessing you couldn't look it up on the internet back then no i'm guessing that the i'm guessing that he got hate mail and death threats through the team but i don't know when how they passed they it along to, to him to his, yeah <laughs> here's your mail today no Ed, they sir. probably had oh to. god this one's written in they blood probably, why'd you they give probably this to had me? to yeah so <laughs> i'm just saying joy gallo um my statement is this i'm completely back I'm completely back. And, and 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 this isn't just this is not just twins, so just before calm down. Oh. Calm down. This is about baseball as well. So first of all, the last I don't know. La- I love the sport and I know that we all do, but it feels like the last 
three or four years or more, but you know, certainly the last few. It's sort of our job to keep tabs on the team and watch games. And so I would, and I'd go to games, but I also would not go sometimes because I don't want to get home at midnight. I have to work the next day. Okay. For ever, I think the longest game of the three was 235. Th- these twins games move. And here's why else I'm back though, from the twins perspective, look at the pitching and fielding base running. This is a, this looks to be a smart team. One thing that drove me crazy last year is it was a dumb team. Dumb, dumb, dumb team. It did not play the game smart. This team for three games, and this has nothing to do with the opponent because the Royals might be one of the worst teams. I have no idea. It's like a lot of the same guys, though. Like, why? I guess Michael Michael Taylor is different and Joey Gallo is different. But I think think what also helps is the pace. They have to stay engaged. They have to stay engaged. But second base right now is different. First base is different. Third base right now, different. Like, like, there's a lot of changes, but I'm just saying they seem to have an ability to play. Not, It's not just that the games are quick, but they were well played, too, from a Twins perspective. And that starts with one place, the mound. The pitching was fantastic. So oh. I'm back. Give me this all summer long, and I am totally in. I will watch wow. more games than ever. This is what I want to see. I don't need to see the Bomba Squad. The Bomba Squad is one of the worst things ever to happen. Wait, from, uh, so slow a, down, guys. Slow down, down now. No, slow no, down. no, no, no. Here's why. Here's why. False sense of security. The home run. You know what the home run? The home run okay, symbolizes a lot of things that are I'm wrong. I'm playing okay. Judd off stage. Oh. I'm yeah. playing Judd off stage. Yeah. I'm back. You went too far you with that take. Bomba Squad, out. <laughs> Wait, you, you, I love how you went from like, all right, you're back. This is great. Baseball is playing at a crisp pace. The I'm Twins back. look like the Twins just played a minor league team for three days, and we're all like, this is great. But uh, And then you had to take your take one step too far no, by somehow looping far. in the greatest home run hitting team in baseball you know what history that team did, did those, and throwing them under the bus. That team loved to play four-hour games. I was out. <laughs> now I'm back. I love you, Twins. I love you, baseball. Rob Manfred, I'm so sorry. To Judd's point, too, Jeff Passon tweeted out these facts of the first four days in the MLB from last year versus this year. So time of game down by 30 minutes. So 238 was the average game time over the opening weekend. It's great. Batting is actually up OPS-wise, average-wise, through the first 50 games of this year versus last year. So batting is actually up. The average is up. Slugging percentage is up. Ground balls are going leaking through that wouldn't otherwise leak through, probably. Stolen bases is up from 70 stolen bases this weekend versus 29 that's, through last year. That's great. Bravo. Things Robbie. are happening. This is it. Like, this is going to sound ridiculous, but it's an indictment on our society, and we all play into it. We're just always looking for something to be happening. Are you guys like me? I can't even, like, it used to be that a commercial break would bore me, and then I'd have to find something to do for, like, four minutes during a commercial break. I can't even I if I'm watching TV, I also have to be scrolling through Twitter or something yeah, or understand. Instagram. Yep, we all have to be properly stimulated. I need like two screens minimum to be I properly know. stimulated. And yep. baseball's out here trying to take, you know, fifty three seconds between pitches for the last ten years. If you just it may sound simple and dumb, but if you just have more things happening at a quicker pace, you're gonna get people's engagement much more likely. Well, and who wants to watch a pitcher walk around the mound? Or a batter step out and adjust his uh, crotch. Everyone stay. Everyone <laughs> has to stay in like the, the moment. Now I don't enjoy that. Everyone has to stay. It's it's absolutely. This is as big a change as when hockey came back. Like I said last week, from the lockout. This is that big of change. It's going to change. Yeah. It's going to change the fan base. I've had a couple moments. Like I was watching uh, a few innings of the game yesterday. Finally, uh found a way to watch twins games by the way so thank you to those no, of you who have want to hear who have helped me solve this problem illegally uh not illegally it's not illegal say. technically Gee. no Immoral. but there was a few times where you know like your internal game. clock as you watch a baseball game is all right there's a pitch and then i can like look at my phone now for Mm-mm. you have kind of an internal clock okay that pitch happens and i can look down at my phone and kind of and then I'll re-engage back with the TV after it feels like I should. And that internal clock is now off. I, I missed the conclusion of like three at bats because I like looked at my phone for 20 seconds and the next pitch happens. Pitch clock. So pitch clock phone. Phone clock. <laughs> All right. All over right. to over to Dex. With right, Dex my Declan, statement is over to Declan. Uh, back to Judge. Huh? My statement is so far so good. 
So the Twins starting rotation, which I, I did a nice breakdown on, on the Scornorth TikTok, by the way. I did a little breakdown of the five uh, pitchers in the starting rotation. You'll find that at Scornorth.com. And I did a little cheeky little, hey, let's review all five of these guys. Well, so far, so good. And the Royals stink. But you know what? Good. You should dice up that AAA lineup, basically, okay? Uh, throughout the weekend, 16.1 innings by the starting staff, one earned run, 15 strikeouts, a whip of 0.73, and I might even combine my second statement into this first statement that the defense matters here. So the oh, wow. Twins, okay? Wow, oh, this is like a this is like a snake draft of of statements here. I'm I'm a uh, pick Declan 10, gets the, pick I like three and four. Pick yeah. Um, I like where he's going. <laughs> they turned ground ball defense, ground balls into outs with their defense. They turned 27 of 28 ground balls into outs yesterday, uh, over the weekend, excuse me. That's a 97% success rate. Humongous double plays turned in opening day from Joey Gallo, who looks really comfortable. By the way, he's a gold glove outfielder, and he's playing mm -hmm. first base. It, it, and he looks very crisp there. The defense absolutely matters. The pitch to contact can work to a degree, right? I mean, this is the, if you can marry... Good pitchers that can strike out guys but have great defense behind you, which the Twins are now employing. This is all good. So far, so good. That is my opening statement. Yeah, it's it, we're again, we're dealing with very small sample sizes here and a Kansas City Royals team that's just not going to be good. But to, De to Declan's point, this, this is what you should look like against teams that aren't very good. The unfortunate thing is, didn't they change the unbalanced schedule this year? So you don't, yeah, you don't get to get face the Royals times. 19 yeah. times. I am so... Oh, damn. I am so excited that baseball looks like like this now. I don't care how the Twins do. <laughs> I'm just so excited. I, I it was so and great. And screw to watch these the games. 2019 Twins. They're worthless. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that was <laughs> damn home runs. They're, they're trying to what? They're trying to play baseball. four hour games. Yeah, welcome to this whole thing. Let's they play four and a half hour games. Gap. That's Let's what this play team four needs. Four and a half hour games. You know what? I put the damn ball in play. No shifts. I love it. Okay, another thing that I think Judd was was ripping the Twins for, and this will be my next segment, that appears to be working for the Twins. Byron Buxton, as designated hitter, can stay as long as he wants. <laughs> Look how fresh he looks. He played in all three games to start the season, which is great. Uh, you know, it's, it's early, but he's batting 462 with a 692 slugging percentage. He's got extra base hits. He's running around. And at some point, if you need to throw him in the outfield, you can. Maybe you maybe you save that bullet until like July at this point. Well, I like that. Just I would DH write him. that down would be correct. First half of the season, you DH him, and then when the weather's a little warmer and you feel confident and the legs feel good, you uh, you unleash well, an outfield that includes Buxton and maybe Michael Taylor at the same time. I don't know what you would do yeah. with some of the other corner guys, but don't but it's, it is working so far. He's playing and hitting well. Don't forget, the Judd plan for the last three years has been get a real center fielder out there, and they did finally. They did. This is really the first time they haven't had just like a minor leaguer as their fourth outfielder, a Jake yeah. Cave or a, who was it, Gilberto Celestino? Last year, yeah. Rob um, Ref Snyder like two years ago. Remember that legend? Yeah, he face planted in Baltimore. He pulled the Butch Husky in, into the uh, wall in Baltimore. Yeah. Rob, what's Rob? Okay. What's Rob Ref Snyder doing these days? He was with Boston. Selling insurance. He was no. He was with the Red Sox last I saw, and may, I want to say he might have gone to a National League team then. Okay, Jake he Cave is like led the spring training and batting average this year. He like batted like four hundred. Yeah, that's awesome. The that's great. Ref Snyder hope... made Boston's opening day lineup. Oh, nice. Yeah. Actually, for Boston last year, Rob Ref Snyder hit three oh seven as a as a oh, backup sort of a pinch him. hitter guy. You guys mocked him. But you know what? Roddy I don't want Ref him Snyder. in center field or in center field behind Buxton. All right, I, I'm going to kill the mojo here. It's got to stop. Emilio Pagan, okay, came in yesterday to cap off a weekend that was a celebration of baseball and the Minnesota Twins, LLC. And Emilio Pagan comes in. I think he gave up one run, but it was a tightrope. It was a and, and look, I know it didn't cost them the game, but I just have one question. Why are we still doing this? Like, what do we think? How many times do we have to hear, yeah, but it's stuff you don't understand. That stuff's going to play at some point in time. Do we really need to see his stuff more? Emilio Pagan, why we know, is he still we know, here? We know he has good stuff, but yeah, if you, if you're just because you have a car that drives fast, if you can't reach the pedals, like... So why is he still here? You know? It's, it's pretty amazing. They, uh, and so... Duran didn't pitch or was unavailable the last couple of days because he slept wrong Thursday night into Friday. 
And Doc okay. Rock said, okay, we got to shut you down for about three months trainer now. Like what? Papa Resta. This is the greatest name. They found a trainer. The, the guy that is now the head athletic trainer for the twins, his last name is Papa Resta. <laughs> Pop, Daddy Rest. <laughs> da- no, I mean, can, but can you Daddy a, Rest. Can you think of a more perfect twins employee to tell players <laughs> you're not going to play than Papa Resta? It's like, uh, I feel like, what, what are the movies? It's Seinfeld. When it comes to Emilio Pagan. Wasn't there an Amy Schumer movie a few years ago where you you think you look like something in the mirror, but you oh. but in reality you look different? Yeah, that sounds like an Amy Schumer movie. Where my wife has accused me of this of having oh, yeah. some like overconfidence. Where, like I look in the mirror and see Ryan oh. Gosling every day, but really right. I'm like 20 pounds overweight and you know receding hairline. I get a, I, I'm getting a haircut later today, and and my fiance lovingly said, you know, you're gonna come home from that haircut, and like, just don't talk to me for 20 minutes because you're just gonna brag about how good you look, and like, just <laughs> by the way you strut and walk in the apartment, I I don't want to see you for the first. That's time. the twin. My point is, that's good. the twins yeah. after Emilio Pagan gets done with yeah. the bullpen session. Oh, look yeah. at that! Look at the movement on that they pitch. Are, they are me post haircut. That is exactly who <laughs> they see something a little different than what is reality. So, how many games are they gonna let him? flirt with blowing or That's blow until they understand. finally say okay i just don't understand the need for it so uh i think so burp live still holds the record among all pitchers for home runs given up in a single season right it was yeah, like 48 i think right or was it was it 48 it was close to 50 i'll find it yep. okay yeah so around 50 in a in a full season like it was like 250 or 300 innings. emilio pagan coming into this season had given up 28 home runs over his last two years, 28 home runs in 120 innings. And so if you were to double the innings to get to Bly Levin's innings total, he was on pace the last couple of years, again, as a reliever, to shatter Burt Bly Levin's home runs allowed record. They should just do that, man. That should be a promotional thing for the Twins. Emilio Pagan's going to be a starter now. We're going to get him to 250 innings to see if he can beat Burt Bly Levin's record. 50. 50 home, 50 home runs allowed. Let's 50. make it happen. <laughs> all right, back to Declan. Uh, all right, my last one. I'm going I'm to piggyback off a of Judd on the negativity. This is your last stand, is my statement. This is your last stand. Talking about Max Kepler. Oh, so yeah. Max Kepler has been thrown back into the leadoff spot. Still has yet to record a hit, I believe, yeah. against he's a over. really bad Royals lineup. And again, small sample sizes. I understand that, but he's been thrusted back in here. The shift has now changed, so he's not going to be pulling into outs as much as he maybe typically was in previous years. But this is the last stand here for Max Kepler. I mean, he was really, really good in 2019. The Bomba Squad even got MVP votes that year. He's one of the, if you want to go by votes, he was one of the 20 best players in the American League that season. But since 2021, he's kind of regressed to being a pull-happy guy that hits a lot of pop-ups or hits a lot of ground balls into outs. The power isn't there. This is the last stand here, Max. Can you show up? Can you kind of resurrect something from 2019? Because mm. I don't think you can afford having this guy at the top of your lineup or even in your lineup. Why is he batting leadoff? Rocco wanted to give him, I think, one more chance. They, they were going to have Gallo hit there, and then they uh, bailed on that plan. And with Polanco not playing, I think they just did, decided that they would see if they could resurrect the magic of 2019 with that damn Bomba squad. We all knew that wouldn't happen. But he but he has one of the lowest on base percentages of any twin the last yeah. handful of years. His yeah. his on base percentage has been no higher than three eighteen going back to two thousand twenty one. So I don't know. Like I put, he's not like a burner. He's not an on base guy. He doesn't. It's just kind of weird. The story's kinda basically weird, just said that that, that in in nineteen he had enough success where they thought that they would try it again for a while. But I think Declan's right. Like I I don't think this is gonna. I don't think he's going to be put out there in perpetuity at this point. I think at some point in time that they might have to uh, mm. do something. I feel like uh, I feel like Correa should just bat lead off, unless he was adamantly against it. Maybe he likes to see someone else I think take he likes some pitches, to see pitches. first. Yeah, I think he likes to see pitches. I think that's okay. his whole thing. Well, at some point, if you're going to run Nick Gordon out there, especially in Polanco's absence, he was a former top five overall pick that, in theory, should be blossoming into his prime here. So I possibility. give him a run too, but. Um, all right, any final twin statements from you guys here? Anything else yeah, you want to you want to rip? The, anything uh, else about the 2019 squad you want to get off your chest? Uh, you you mean that the delay a game squad? Um, no. Here's my last statement. There's one more change to come. 
All right. So baseball's rules right now are actually trending in a really positive direction time of game, blah, blah, blah. But did you guys see, I, I feel like this has been a focus, but it is going to be, especially now, because it's one of the main, like huge problems left. Um, the electronic strike zone, which is going to be tried by the uh, Saints and AAA, mm-hmm. which is how they evolve this. I think we're going to see, unless it just falls apart completely, and I don't think it will, the electronic strike zone in 24, because we're seeing more and more now how bad strike zones are. Yeah. And it's like it's the one thing left to talk about that's screwed up. Yeah. And it's, it's, and it's, I'm going to defend umpires here because Major League Baseball has hung umpires out to dry. Everyone has like 4K definition on their TVs, you know, shout out to TCL TVs. I feel like the smallest TV anyone has now is like 40 inches in their living room. So everyone, you know, 20, 30 years ago, when I'd go to my dad's apartment to watch, you know, baseball games on the weekend and we and we thought we had a big TV. It's like a 27 inch Zenith or something. Yeah, standard nice. definition. You know, and they're not, the K zone might've been new, but you can barely see it. It's right. just kind of whatever. Right. And now they're showing you, first of all, guys are also throwing 97 miles an hour with crazy movement on their pitches. That's less change. The human eye is not meant to bat a thousand on calling those pitches on the black, especially when everyone's watching in high def. Mm-hmm. So it's not even really that the umpires are getting worse or it's just that we have put magnifying glasses on all the mistakes, all the pimples, and we have told umpires figure it out anyways. You know, remember even like that play at first base, it was uh, like 12 years ago and that uh, Armando Galarraga had a perfect game going and Jim, Jim Joyce was the only guy in America that wasn't given the opportunity to in the moment say, oh, you know what? That was the wrong call at first base. So we got replay. And he had to suffer. So like then we got replay. So we should at least have a challenge system. I think that's how it starts off. We'll do the K zone and you can challenge like five pitches per game. The, re- the human will call the pitches in the first season, and then we'll use the, the, the box as like a, a challenge system like you see in tennis. And tennis, they have a lines judge, and they like, or they have multiple, right? And they call, and then the Hawkeye system, you can challenge if you want during a tennis match. I bet that's how we unveil it, but it has to happen. Yep. By the way, opening day at Target Field, April 6th. That's on Thursday, 310 first pitch, Twins, Astros, if the weather gets weird, there's a built-in day on Friday, but the weather should be clear at some point. It might be a little bit cold, but you can buy your tickets at twins.com slash tickets. First chance to see the new uniforms. First chance to see maybe Joey Gallo hit some bombs out of the plaza. Twins.com slash tickets. First 20,000 fans through the gate on opening day receive an opening day TC hat presented by your local Northland Ford dealers. Twins.com slash tickets. Very All nice. Right. Cool. Good talk. Good talk. Good stuff. A lot of positivity. So much positivity. Yep. Um, check out, if you want negativity and therapy, our Timberwolves edition of Mackie and Judd today. And uh, you can also find Purple Daily speculating, or I guess transitioning from speculation to reality as it pertains to Kirk Cousins and the 49ers. So check those out. We'll see you tomorrow.